But these are four promises that every believer needs to get a hold of and enact in their life. And uh, I believe that these promises will help you live an overcoming life. We looked at the promise a couple of weeks ago, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. How many of you want to know that you're on the winning team? Amen. This is a victorious church, right? And God has a victorious church and we're a part of it. The enemy can't stop it. Last week we looked at the promise, therefore if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. You say, well pastor, I didn't have a good week this week. Excuse me. I didn't have a good week this week. Uh, that's okay. Listen, declare the word. Reckon yourself dead to sin right now and start walking. Amen? God's faithful, right? And uh, so uh, we need to understand that His promises are real and true. So this morning we're going to take a look at a powerful promise from Psalms 22 and verse number 3. So if you have your Bible, you can open it up or you can find the notes or it's going to be on the screen as well. All right, so Psalms 22 and verse number 3. And I'd like to read this in a couple of different versions, all right? It says this, the King James Version says, But thou art holy, O thou, that inhabitest the praises of Israel, the New Revised Standard Version says, Yet you are wholly enthroned on the praises of Israel. Now, it is from this verse that we hear a phrase that uh, is commonly quoted like it is a verse. But it's actually not a verse. It's taken from this verse. What happened was there was a famous song a few years ago, and, and it was such a powerful song. People picked it up and just started saying it, all right? And you probably heard this. The Lord inhabits the praises of His people. Who's heard that? That's not a verse. I can't find that anywhere in the Bible, but it comes from this verse. It's a truth nonetheless, and uh, I, I believe in that. Uh, you can hear that verse in that old that song, that uh, numerous songs have that in it, and our worship leaders quote it, pastors refer to it, but uh, it is actually not in the Bible, but that doesn't take away its truth. But let's take a look at the verse again. The Hebrew word that's translated enthroned or inhabitus means literally to sit and remain sitting. It means to inhabit or to dwell. It implies the idea of ownership and control. Uh, and we see that very same word used back in the book of Genesis when Abraham and Lot, you remember, they were, they were trying to dwell in or inhabit the same piece of land. And they had too many flocks and they had to divide. That's because they were both trying to inhabit and control a piece of land where there was only room for one. The word is also used to mean, it means enthroned. It's used uh, to speak of kings who sit with their authority. And, and give authority. It's used uh, to describe a judge who, who sits and gives his uh, uh, decisions as he presides over court cases. So I believe that the phrase that's taken from these two scriptures, the Lord inhabits the praises of his people, I believe that's something every believer ought to understand. Do I have any believers in the house today? You need to get a hold of this and understand this because this is incredibly, incredibly powerful because this is what I believe there's something powerful that happens when you praise God there's something supernatural that happens when a group of believers come together for the sole purpose of worship and praising God and with heartfelt thanks and praise they praise the Lord I'll tell you it's something great happens and let me tell you this scripture is not the only scripture that brings this out this is a truth that runs all the way through the word when God's people praise and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, it creates an environment that is attractive to the presence of the Lord. It is attractive to God. And God comes and manifests His power. Now let's just back up for a moment today, all right? Uh, let, me, let me just say that God is always on the throne, right? How many of you know He's always on the throne? Whether you praise Him or whether you don't, 
He's God. You know, someone said, well, I don't believe in God. Doesn't matter whether you believe in God or not. He's real, He exists, and He is God. Come on, somebody. Amen. So it's not that God somehow needs for us to create a throne in which He sits on. In fact, the book of Revelation tells us that God actually has a throne up in, in that sphere where He dwells. And the book of Colossians tells us that Jesus Christ that name that's above every name. Come on, can we have a hand of praise for Jesus today? That name, he has sat down on the right hand of his majesty. And the throne is the place where there is an abundance of worship, all right? There are the four living creatures that are giving constant praise to God. The 12, 24 elders are, are bowing down before him. The cherubim are crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And all of that is true whether or not you praise him or not. Come on. How many of you know God has a throne? But the beauty of this verse tells us that God wants for His people to praise Him. And when they do, here's what happens. God, by His Spirit, comes and sits among us. Amen? He is enthroned among us. He dwells where we are. He inhabits the throne of our heart. And that's true whether you're a rancher out there in Montana and uh, you're listening to the radio on your truck and you're praising Jesus. There's nobody around for a hundred miles. He'll come and His presence will permeate that place. Amen? And it's true whether it's you're in a, in a large gathering in a multiple, in a metropolitan area where there's many people People that are gathered. Come on. Wherever people praise God, the Lord comes. Amen. By His Spirit. And I just wonder today, is there anybody in this place today that says, I want to praise Him. Amen. I want to give Him glory. Uh, the first of all, the first reason why we do that is because He's worthy of it. Right? He's worthy of it because of what He's done. He's worthy of it because of who He is. And then secondly, He's worthy of it because we, when we do, He inhabits our praise. Let me give you a few thoughts about praise today. First of all, praise reminds us that God is bigger than our situation. He's bigger than our situation. The Psalm of David, this Psalm wasn't written after David had defeated all of his enemies and everything was wonderful. It's interesting. How many of you know that in order to stu study the Bible, you've got to understand the context of what something was written in, right? You read the verses before, you read the verses after, and you get the bigger picture. We're not just going to pull out a verse and just examine that verse. We're going to see the whole thing, right? Well, David in this chapter was feeling a lot of stress. He was facing some things that must have been very difficult. And so David, in a sense, is reminding himself that God inhabits the praises of Israel. He was a part of Israel. He was one of the people of God, and so he was really realizing that God is enthroned in the praises. Let me ask you something. Have you ever been in a situation where you need to be, to be reminded how big your God is? Have you ever looked at something and said, man, I need a big God for this one, right? Uh, have you ever looked at it and, and, and what happened is, 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 is you, suddenly within you, you start feeling panic. You start feeling negativity. You start feeling fear. You start worrying about what's coming your way. Maybe your heart begins to pound. Your knees feel weak. It gets hard to breathe. Your mind begins to swirl. Oh, you know why? Let me tell you, this is what we need to do. Before all of that happens, we need to get in a habit of praising God. Right? Don't just praise Him when everything's going bad. Make it your daily habit to praise God. Get up in the morning and praise Him. At noon, praise Him. All the way through your day, praise Him. Excuse me, y'all. I got some of my breakfast here yet. <laughs> Bothering me to no end. Ever had that? Come on. I'm going to have to edit this before I put it up. Okay, here we go. But you got to get in the habit of praising Him, right? Here's why. Because when the day comes, and I can assure you that there's coming a day into your life when it's gonna, you're going to need a big God, if you're in the habit of praising Him, it'll be automatic. And in that moment, you begin to praise Him. And this was very real to David. Let me read to you some of this context they had of Psalms 22. 
David said this, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime and you do not hear. And in the night seasons... I and am not silent. David wasn't exactly shouting the victory here, right? He'd been calling out on God, and it seemed like God wasn't hearing him. It seemed like God wasn't there. He's very honest about his feelings. And how very interesting that in the very next verse, after he makes these statements, he says, oh, yeah, that's right. You're enthroned on the praises of your people, right? Uh, and, so, and so as you read a little bit further in this chapter, verse 11, this is what he says. He says, be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. And so David found that the situation that he was in wasn't an easy one. What David needed was he needed for God to come and sit in that situation. He needed God to be present in that situation. He needed for God to come and dwell. He needed for the one who can change circumstances to come and, and, and be enthroned and rule and take ownership of that situation. Come on. He needed to be God to be enthroned in his praises. And sometimes that's the situation that we find ourselves in. We find ourselves looking at stuff and what we really need is for God to come and take control. And that's why David says this in Psalms 22 in verse 22. He says I will praise. How many of you know that sometimes you have to activate your will to praise God? Right? You have to activate your will after you've had a fuss with your wife. Now, I, I know nobody in this church, that never happens here. But after you've had a fuss with that special someone, your daughter or whoever it is, you, you, you've got to activate your will to praise the Lord, right? Because your flesh does not want to praise. Your mind is troubled just like David was. Maybe your heart is heavy or your, or your spirit is burdened. But this is what David said. David said, I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You know what David was saying? He was saying, look, I just got to get the church where I can worship the Lord a little bit. I'm going to the house of the Lord today, and I know that the pastor might have something good to say. I hope he does. But the real reason I'm going there is because I got to connect with somebody who's bigger than I am. I got to connect with somebody who's greater than I am. And I'm going to do that by praising him. So I'm going to activate my will. And he says, I will will declare and then once he gets to that point he says look he's, he, he's, he can't stop just with his own praise he wants everybody to praise he says you who fear the Lord praise him all you descendants of Jacob glorify him and fear him all you offspring of Israel in other words he says I will do it so the next time you look at your checkbook and it don't look good I want you to activate your will and say, I will praise you today, Lord, because your word says, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. The next time the doctor comes and gives you a negative report, you say, to, you say hey, you know something? My, I, the Lord is the God that I am, the God that healeth thee, says the Lord. He sent his word and he healed them. By his stripes I am healed. And begin to praise him and begin to thank him. Come on. Amen. If you're going through a moment in time and you're feeling negative and you're feeling like everything's down and you just want to blast out at everybody, listen, act activate your will and say I'm going to praise him anyway I'm going to thank him that the word says as the, my days are so shall my strength be and I, de I have determined I'm going to use my strength to praise the Lord do I got any praisers in the house today do I got any worshipers in the place today people that know how to praise God 